Hey kiddos, today we're going to talk about the um, SI system. Um, you know, probably already know a lot about it um, in terms of it being called the metric system that you probably learned in middle or high school. Um, SI stands for System International, basically it's the international system um, for having consistent measurements, consistent units, and a consistent way to convert them. Um, the real power of this system that you may recall from doing this in elementary or middle school is that you don't have to memorize a bunch of what is this conversion or what's the conversion between cups and gallons or that there are 5,280 feet in a mile. Instead, everything works off the same set of prefixes. No matter what type of measurements you're using, the prefixes are always the same and they're always just a matter of shifting the decimal from one place to another. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Um, in the next video, we'll actually practice a little bit of that decimal shifting, do the calculations part. It's not really calculations because we're just going to move the decimal, um, but be able to do those types of conversions. So, officially there are seven um, SI bases. We're going to see here in a minute that there are more bases than that, or at least more things that we're going to use as SI bases. But essentially, these seven are the, the, the essential ones, and everything else is either derived from these seven, or it's something that we sort of treat as though it were a metric or an SI unit, even though it might not actually be. So let's talk about these seven real quick. So first off, we have length, which obviously is going to be measured in meters, uh, lowercase m. Um, we have mass, which, what's the base for that? Well, you might say grams, and grams would actually be a pretty good guess. We're going to treat grams as the base when we set up the staircase to do the conversions here in a minute. But officially speaking, kilograms is actually the base. There is, in Paris, there's actually le grand kilogram. There is the official kilogram by which all other kilograms are measured. So that becomes the base in the SI system. Um, time is in seconds. That's a lowercase s. Current is amperes, uppercase a. Um, temperature is in Kelvin. Okay, uppercase K. Um, this sixth one is going to seem really weird to us. Um, it probably isn't something that you've heard of before other than a couple of my videos talking about it. But amount of substance, not amount of subs, not subway or anything like that. Amount of substance is the mole. We're going to talk a lot about the mole this year. Um, but that is one of our SI bases, essentially how many particles of stuff is in there. Um, and then the last one is luminous intensity. It's measured in candelas. We're probably not going to use that much this year, um, but it's certainly possible that you'll see it, and it's one of the seven official bases. So what are the unofficial bases? Okay, so let's talk real quick about other bases. Now, most of these other bases, most of them, not all of them, but most of the other bases can be derived from these units. So what that means is that the, the units that are the other bases are some combination of these other ones. These are these like these are the essential ones, and everything else is built out of those. So, what are the other bases? Well, there are newtons for force. If you've taken um, some sort of physics, or or even in middle school, you probably talk about forces. Newtons are measured in those. Um, a really important one to us in chemistry is joules. Um, we're certainly going to be using a lot of that. Um, Hertz, which is a measure of frequency. So like radio, um, radio stations, if you dialed one in, that's the frequency, okay? So that's hertz, so if you dial in, it's megahertz. That's an SI prefix in front of one of these derived bases. Um, those are sort of the big ones. You might see something like Pascal's also we'll use for pressure um, later on. Again, that's, that's a, a, an unofficial der derivative base. And then the last one that I wanna mention isn't really an SI base at all, but we treat it just like it is, and that is liters. Liters, of course, measure volume. Um, we're, it's not an official SI base. The official SI, SI unit for volume would be meters cubed. Um, but that's a really big, you know, a meter, a meter, meter. That's a really big measurement of volume. And so liter sort of is the unofficial thing that we use in that case. And it's going to get to use all the same prefixes to adjust it um, as the others do. Speaking of the prefixes, let's talk real quick about the prefixes. And then we're going to do the staircase to see the beginnings of how do we actually do the measurements here. So prefixes. So these are the prefixes that we're commonly going to use in chemistry. Let me step aside and make sure you can read them all. So mega, kilo, hecto, deca, the base, which is obviously not a prefix, but that's where the base goes. Deci, ceni, milli, micro, and nano. My guess is that these right here, you probably learned in middle school. 
Um, I would be shocked if you didn't. In fact, you probably learned a little mnemonic to go along with them. Um, I learned a really creepy one. I don't know why. I Apparently, I went to school in a different era in the 80s, so maybe that makes it different. But So the way I learned it was King Hector died by drinking chocolate milk. That doesn't make any sense, but apparently King Hector was lactose intolerant or whatever. Um, so that, that's how I learned it. I'm not really much for learning mnemonics, but I think if that helps you, then that's great. Um, I'm going to write next to them real quick just what their abbreviation is just to make sure that everybody has those and knows what those are. Okay, so prefixes. So capital M for mega, just like megabytes. Lowercase k for kilo. H for hec hecto. Um, deca is going to be a special case because we can't just use D because that's down here for deci. So it's DK. All right. C, lowercase m. All of these are lowercase except for mega. Micro is a really weird one. I, it, it's hard for me even to draw it in a way that makes sense to kids. I think it looks like an M with a tail hanging off or maybe a U with an extra little swoosh there. Um, and then a lowercase n for nano. So micro, nano, and mega you probably didn't learn in middle school, and that's okay. But you're likely to see them at some point um, in chemistry, so I wanted to make sure that you saw those. I'm going to, on the staircase, I probably won't show those initially, and we'll come back and, and show where those would go. So I keep talking about a staircase, so what the heck do I mean by that? Like, what's the staircase, okay? So let me draw the staircase, then we'll talk about it, and then we're going to... Okay, so we have a staircase drawn. You're like, okay, that's great. What does the staircase mean? Well, the staircase gives us a place to put... Um, all of our prefixes so that we know how to do the conversions. Okay, so I'm going to put a K here. You're like, why didn't you put the mega? Well, mega would make this staircase really big, as would nano. And, I mean, we could extend this, and it would be 21 steps or whatever. This is going to cover most of what we're worried about on a day-to-day -day basis, and then I'll explain to you where the other stuff goes in a moment. Now, this step is a little special, and so I'm going to box it out a little bit. This is the base. Okay, so just make sure that you understand that that's where the base is. There's no prefix there. That's where the base unit goes. That's a mole. That's a gram. That's a meter. Okay, that's what goes there. Okay, and so we got deci, centi, milli, and then here comes the trick. We're going to go down three steps to get to micro. Okay, again, these are probably the six or seven, counting the base, that you learned in middle school. Micro is something extra that I think is probably going to be pretty important to you. So you might be asking yourself, okay, great, that's awesome. Where do mega and nano come in? So mega is three steps up from kilo, okay? There's essentially, there are, it's a thousand times bigger because remember, the way this works is that every step is a decimal place. So three steps up is mega. You could go three steps up from that to giga. Okay, again, most of us are pretty savvy in computer technology now. That makes pretty solid sense. So how does the staircase work? Okay, so, and, and again, this is going to be a sort of abbreviated explanation. You'll see more examples of this in the next video, but here's the way it works. So I've got 450 grams. Grams is the base, so that would put me on this step right here. Okay, let's say that I wanted to convert that into kilograms. Well, to convert it into kilograms, how many steps do I need to take? I need to take one, two, three steps. Okay, so three steps. And not just three steps, but three steps to the left. The direction you go on the staircase is the same direction that you take the decimal point, And you go the exact same number of spaces as you took steps. So that means I need to go one, two, three to the left. So we're going to go one, two, three to the left, and that would leave me with 0 0.450 kilograms, okay? Technically, actually, I should have another zero because that zero is significant, and that kind of matters, right? Okay, so that's kilograms. So, well, what if I didn't want to go to kilograms? Let's start this one over real quick. What if instead of going to kilograms, I wanted to go to milligrams, okay? How many milligrams is in that same amount? Well, again, I'm, I'm at grams, so I start at the base, one, two, three steps, but three steps to the right this time. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go, let me erase this, just get this out of the way real quick. We'll remember that that was grams. But one, two, three steps. My new decimal point goes there, just like we did before in scientific notation and stuff. I'm going to fill in those spots with zeros. And that means that 450.0 grams becomes 450,000 milligrams. Okay, 
So here's what's important to know, okay? You move the decimal the number of steps that you move and the direction that you move, okay? Both of those things have to be true. All right, thanks, kiddos.